The Eagle Stars have been dominating training camp so far, but that's to be expected. It's the surprise standouts that have me really excited, making the Birds roster not only deeper than I expected, but cuts, they're gonna be difficult. Let me explain. I'm Thomas Mott, this is The Thomas Mott Show. Every year during Eagles training camp, there are always a few surprise standouts that no one really expected through the first couple of practices. Deep roster players who really could be cut at any moment if their play on the field slipped just a little bit. For instance, last year it was Eli Ricks, an undrafted free agent cornerback out of Alabama who made so many darn plays during the Eagles' entire training camp and preseason run, they simply couldn't cut him. Or for instance, Marcus Epps, kind of a no-name guy, 2022 training camp rolls around, he makes a bunch of plays, and he's a starter for Philadelphia. And while the Birds have just put on pads, and obviously there's a long way to go, there have been a couple of standout players I did not see coming at all. Take Patrick Johnson, for instance, a name you might want to familiarize yourself with over the next few weeks. He was the Eagles' 234th overall pick in 2021 and has been nearly invisible his first few years in the league with only, what, a handful of tackles through 48 games? Simply put, this guy's been a long shot to make the roster every single year he's been in Philadelphia, and yet something's been very, very different in 2024, with even Nick Sirianni naming him as one of the most impressive players from the first few practices. Yeah, you know, again, we're looking for guys to play with great detail, great toughness. You know, I've seen I've seen the toughness really show up. Um, you know, I just I'll single out a couple of the defensive ends where I've really seen that that toughness really show up. Um, you know, that physical toughness, that relentless effort, you know, Patrick Johnson, Nolan, Nolan Smith, Jalex Hunt. I've really seen them, you know, hustling to the football, just, you know, the relentless effort really and the toughness really shows up with those three guys and, and been excited. You know, there is a lot of mi mixing and matching, and we're trying to get an evaluation on everybody as guys learn how to play together. Uh, but, you know, I, I, I would single those guys out as far as their, you know, their relentless effort, their toughness that they've been playing with uh, throughout camp. And well, sure, Johnson might not become a superstar edge rusher. He's not a, you know, a closet TJ Watt, but being able to produce and fill in when needed will be critical for the Birds in 2024. Depth is always a big part of Super Bowl champion teams. Now, of course, no one really knows, but if Andrew DiCicco's tweet yesterday about him is any consultation, he might be even better than anyone expected. Listen to this, quote, an under-the-radar player to keep an eye on in Eagles camp, Edge Patrick Johnson. Flash during one-on-ones today and has showed well in special team drills. He was also one of the three defenders Nick Sirianni singled out Monday due to his physical toughness and relentless effort. Also worth noting, the team rostered six edge rushers last year on the final 53. To enhance his pass rush, I'm told Johnson actually spent two weeks in Dallas this offseason during the former Eagle defensive lineman coach Pete Jenkins. And that by no means is a guarantee, but it's been a massive surprise for the Burrs nonetheless, making it very, very difficult to cut Patrick Johnson. Now, apparently also difficult is me trying to get you guys who keep winning the Eagles open practice tickets to actually send me an email and claim them. So, as I mentioned yesterday, if I didn't hear from Rusty Shackle or Jaquil Brown, I was going to go ahead and draw two new names on today's show, and here we are. Those winners are Mr. Spicy Mice and K Street KH7EY. So, guys, please go to my description box, send me an email. All you gotta do is take a screenshot of you, sign in your YouTube account, prove it's you, email me today, and I'll go ahead and get those sent out to you. The way you can go to the open practice tomorrow. I mean, literally, it is tomorrow. If not, I don't hear from you by, I don't know, the live show tonight. I'll go ahead and redraw during the live show and give my four tickets away to at least two lucky winners. Oh, and we're approaching 60,000 subs from the channel. So in order to say thank you, I'm gonna go ahead and give away a signed, yes, you see it there, signed Brian Westbrook jersey, officially signed by him. I got the documentation and everything to one of my subscribers once we hit 60,000 subs. So go down below and subscribe, hit the thumbs up button while you're down there, and drop a comment. Let me know if you'd actually like to add this Brian Westbrook signed jersey to your collection. Even Eagles Man Cave, this might be the actual perfect edition. Just trying to say thank you to everyone who's been subscribing. It's been a crazy growth process the last couple of months, and the season's fast approaching. We to 60k soon. I'll go ahead and give this away to one of my lucky subscribers. Now, another player mentioned by Sirianni in the clip earlier is Jalex Hunt. And well, sure, he was a third-round draft pick, and so it's kind of some big expectations and large shoes to fill, we all really didn't know what to expect because he came from a super small school and no one had heard of him before the draft. So far, so good. I mean, Hunt's been pretty darn impressive through the first few practices, and yesterday, during the first padded practice, showed that physicality that really got him drafted by Philadelphia a couple of months ago. To his credit, though, he's trying to learn as fast as possible and is taking every good rep with the bad reps to try to make sure he learns and helps the Eagles in any way in 2024. Oh yeah, oh yeah. Uh, Lane, Lane strapped me up today. A little, a little hit throw by, was not expecting it. Uh, I should have known. I thought I'd be laying on the outside. Did not, did not be laying at all. 
Um, but yeah, that was just, just one of the moments for sure. And on the flip side, has there been a time when you've been like, oh, I, I belong here? Uh, yeah, that's when I got here. Um, just how I was welcomed into the locker room, I have a great room. So they they said, hey, like the coaches bought into you, the Eagles bought into you. And you're here for a reason. So they never made it seem like I didn't belong here. So when I stepped on the field, it's kind of just like, yeah. Uh, I appreciate y'all for doing that for me. Now, thinking about the Eagles' biggest camp surprises for this video, I couldn't help but at least mention Jalen Hurts once. Now, I know, Jalen Hurts is a top 10 highest paid quarterback in the league, and he's had Philadelphia in position to win the one seed each of the last two years. Like, he obviously should be playing well at this point in his career, but that's not really the point. Like, he's not just playing well. He's not just looking good. He's been absolutely, incredibly dominant so far through Eagles training camp. Right now, he's completed over 85% of his passes with zero interceptions the first two weeks. Remember, just two months ago, he was throwing multiple picks really a practice during OTAs and had everyone, including myself, wondering maybe the Kellen Moore offense is a little bit too much to learn this quickly. Now, just a few weeks post, really, minicamp, Hurts has taken complete control of the Eagles offense. And honestly, he has me more excited for his potential level of play than any other Eagle entering 2024. Oh, and he also looks really healthy too, which is kind of surprising just based on the fact that he wasn't 100% during the late Super Bowl run in 2022, and definitely, despite people not really confirming it, had something going on with his lower body last year. Whatever it is, Hertz's teammates, they're taking notice in a big way. He looks bigger, faster, stronger, and better. Listen to Smitty. Yeah, I've heard Jalen's, I didn't get to see him because he was in the golf cart, but I heard he's faster this year. Do you agree? Yeah, looks a lot faster. He looks faster. So I have to ask the question, would you beat him if you guys were course, racing straight up? Of course, 100%. Like you would smoke him? Yes, 100%. Throughout that Super Bowl run, he protected the football better than any season prior. He also ran the ball really well when necessary and had very few overall bad games. Turnovers, sacks, and just kind of head-scratching decisions were all a massive part of last year's collapse, and Jalen was at the head of that. And listen, it's not just me saying he looks a little bit better this year. How about longtime Eagles reporter Ruben Frank saying yesterday, this is probably the best Jalen Hurts has looked in his five years. I mean, think about this. If these reports are true, and this is the version of Jalen Hurts we're about to get in 2024, you add that with a loaded roster, and the potential for this football team really goes through the roof. I think Hurts' performance so far can at least get us to 1,000 likes on today's video. If you're watching this video and you got to this point, give me a thumbs up. Let's get to 1,000 likes for Jalen Hurts being absolutely incredible so far. I did a whole show on Quinya Mitchell yesterday, but I have to at least mention the fact that we need to realize just how impressive this guy has been so far. Toledo, much like where Jalen Hunt came from, it's not a powerhouse. Like, great players don't just come out of Toledo every single year. No offense to Toledo, but that's just how it is. But it's not really just the skills of Quinya Mitchell that's been impressive. The surprising part for me is how quickly he's been able to figure out how the nickel corner spot works. He admitted yesterday during his press conference he's never played any nickel. Think about this any nickel at any point in his career before the past couple of months. How much? How many reps do you, would you say you got in the slot you know, before this summer? I guess how much of an adjustment has it been for you? Uh, no reps in the slot. So, I mean, they've been throwing it at me, but I feel like I've been handling it well, so yeah. What was the learning curve like going from outside to the slot? What are some of the challenges? Uh, yeah, just knowing where my help at, just being inside, uh, knowing the checks that the safety give me. So just, just more of a, uh, just learning the whole defense, I'll say that. Going from somewhat of an injury liability in the past with Avante Maddox at nickel to a guy with Quinion's potential could do wonders for the Birds secondary. Teams these days always like to use their wide receivers all over the formation to attack the weakest DB. And if the Birds' quote-unquote weakest link is a first-round cornerback with superstar potential, again, the secondary is going to absolutely eat in 2024. Now, sure, these aren't the only standouts so far during training camp. There are some other honorable mentions we need to at least talk about here. I think Johnny Wilson has been kind of the standout of the other receivers, a.k.a. the guys not named A.J., Smitty, Paris, or Covey. Not really sure what he was going to be coming out of FSU. So far, though, the big physical target has been just that. I like what I've seen so far from him. Also, give some credit to Mekhi Becton for willingly accepting a position change. I mean, going from tackle to guard, it's not easy. And with Tyler Steen seemingly out for the foreseeable future, Mekhi Becton is in the driver's seat to be a starting right guard on the Philadelphia Eagle offensive line. Finally, you can't mention surprises without at least saying Kenny G's name. Like, it's a backfield filled with now one superstar and really a rookie fan favorite in Will Shipley. Gainwell, though, he's held his own according to all reports, and even yesterday when the pads went on, scored multiple touchdowns and really looked impressive. All in all, training camp ebbs and flows. People look good one week, they look bad another week, but at this point, I mean, what, seven practices in, heading into the open practice tomorrow night, you can at least start to go ahead and look at patterns and say, oh, Jalen Hurts, 
yeah, that seems to be a common theme. Patrick Johnson, his name keeps popping up. Queen Anne Mitchell dominated yet again yesterday. I think it's going to continue. Very curious to see what happens going forward. Be sure to go ahead and subscribe. Help us get to 60,000 subs. The way I can give away the Brian Westbrook jersey I have right here. And also, if you are one of the winners of the Eagles ticket giveaway, send me an email or else tonight during our Wednesday Link Live, myself and Josh Davis, I'm going to pick two new people who are watching the live stream to give those tickets away because I got four of them and someone, some of you, need to take them to go ahead and go to the open practice. I'm Thomas Mott, hanging out on a Wednesday. This has been the Thomas Mott Show.